everybody, it's Lydia here. So yesterday I did a lovely spoiler free review of Gates of Thread and Stone by Laurie M. Lee and today I am going to be throwing spoilers at you left, right and centre because this is my spoiler filled review. Let's do this. So this is a YA fantasy and it is set in this city called Ninurta which as far as the inhabitants are aware is the last city on earth. They don't know any that anyone else is left after this thing called the rebirth which we don't really know much about it but it sounds kind of like an apocalypse basically. So the leader of this city is Carl Ninu and he is a wielder of magic and as far as anyone knows, he is the only person who can wield magic. No one else seemingly has any, except, and of course, except because this is a Y fantasy, for Kai. Kai is the lead in this book. She is a teenager and she can manipulate time. She can slow it down and basically play with the threads of time. There isn't really that much explanation into how she does this, but she can. So Kai lives with her older brother Reeve in a converted cargo container in the labyrinth which is the really crappy rundown part of Ninurta where no one really wants to live and everyone is trying to escape and Reeve isn't actually her brother he found her abandoned one day she had no memory and he took her in and now they call each other brother and sister but one day Reeve disappears and Kai with the help of Avon who is this shop boy she knows basically try and find him. That is the premise of the book. Simples. So I give this book three stars out of five and there were a number of reasons for that but in general I just want to say I did just really enjoy it and I am looking forward to the next book in the series which is out later this year and so I did enjoy it despite the fact that I'm gonna you know blow it apart in a second but I just want to let you know I did enjoy it. One of my big issues with this book, and I think this was a lot to do with the fact that as far as I'm aware this is Laurie Emily's first book and I think this is probably something that will she will get better at just in general come her second book, but I did find it pretty damn predictable. I could guess pretty much everything that was going to happen, particularly in regards to Avon and Kai's powers as it were, um, especially then when they were with, um, what's his name, Famine. The black rider guy. I could see it all coming, it was really obvious. Um, you knew that Avon was gonna be, was gonna have powers and in fact I pretty much guessed that he had powers when they were um, attacked by the gargoyles in the wood on the way to the void um, when he hurt his arm and that was just obvious. Oh he's clearly got some kind of healing ability and then by the time they got to that conversation with the black rider where they were talking about um, the uh, sentinels and all the magic surrounding them, when it got to that point I was like yeah okay this is obvious um, and I, maybe we were meant, maybe it was meant to be obvious but it was almost too obvious and I, obvious, I found when it kind of eventually came out and Kai eventually realised it, I found like I was sort of sitting there like oh finally, about time too, it was just so obvious you know, um, so I just the, and that wasn't the only moment, there were other points throughout the book where it was kind of obvious that something w was going to happen, I, ca I can't think of any other examples right now, but it was, and that kind of just sort of diminished my general, not so much the enjoyment, but uh, I wasn't shocked at all in this book, put it that way, because you could see com everything coming pretty much a mile off. My big issue with this book, however, was the character development. Kai had little to no character de development in this book, and a lot of it was because she was so damn obsessed with Avon. Just the constant mentioning of, oh, I'm touching his arm, oh, he's looking at me weirdly and it's making me feel things. Every other page, in spite of this kind of mortal peril that they were in, the majority of the book, and these kind of crazy shit that was happening around them, they was, she was just so freaking worried about even what he was thinking of her and all these feelings that she had for him and oh my god it just got so annoying and it just meant that her character development just it didn't exist because she felt and acted exactly the same way at the start of the book as she did at the end and oh 
why it was just constant and it drove me around the bend and I know I know I'm always mentioning on this channel how I hate love interests and love triangles this isn't just me being kind of I don't know whatever go on Goodreads and look at the reviews on there and you will see I'm not the only one who thinks this because it was just constant and I did enjoy the book but I would have enjoyed it a hell of a lot more if every other page there wasn't some reference to Avon's bulging bicep or something ridiculous like that. Oh it was just, ah, oh, it drove me round the bend. Why? Why? And I'm hoping, I'm really really hoping that in the sequel something like that doesn't happen again because oh it was so frustrating. Like part of me was kind of glad when Avon died at the end because it was just like yes she won't go on about those bulging thigh muscles or biceps or whatever anymore and then they brought him back and it was oh, that just drove me around the bend that the ending in general I thought was kind of a bit uh, to be honest it was so convoluted like when they were talking about the river and all that stuff I was like I don't understand any of this like I'm a fairly advanced reader I'm 25 and I know kind of understand things in general but I was just like what is going on this is just I had to reread a lot of things in that final kind of concluding chapters to actually understand the theoretics behind what they were talking about because it was almost too convoluted and all that kind of history and mythology it was just like you were thrown it all at once and it was just like I don't understand this I'm just gonna nod and smile along and just accept it because apparently we're not gonna get a great explanation of it so I'm hoping that in the sequel we will get more of an understanding of that because oh I just I honestly just don't have a clue really right now exactly how it all works and all that stuff with the fact that Kai is actually not human she's some kind of embodiment of the river and she's been locked in this human body that was weird that was weird like why like I could see it coming a mile off that she was going to be the daughter of some kind of powerful person initially I thought it was gonna be the car I'm not gonna lie but I wasn't that surprised when it turned out to be time itself um, and when that happened I was a bit like oh, okay I get it that's obvious that that's gonna happen but then when it was like she's an embodiment of the river and she was trapped in a human body and she's not really human really it was just so lame oh it, it was just weird it's just weird and especially with Avon becoming this new um what is he oh, I can't remember what he's called something beginning with C with him being brought back and he doesn't recognize her it's gonna become like some weird sort of Romeo and Juliet story isn't it I really fear that honestly because as I say I do think in general the story of this book was actually quite decent I think it was quite clever and I enjoyed it and it was it kept me gripped and everything throughout the book in spite of all the issues I had with it um, but I do worry about where it's going it could get a bit too ridiculous um, even more ridiculous than when you think about it it was but there we go I wasn't really sure as well with this book kind of what really the world itself was like. I, c I found it difficult to imagine certain parts of it like I felt like um, just at the very beginning when she is uh, walking through the city and she's the ma she's doing the mail and things like that I thought this was sort of some medievalish city kind of that kind of style you know everything you sort of expect in these kind of fantasy books that kind of old cobbled streets kind of that's what I was imagining and then um, when they went to when she was put in the jail uh, towards the end and it, it, they were describing it like it was some kind of modern day jail and I on it that just really confused me like what kind of world is this meant to be is it modern is it old-fashioned what is it and yeah just the, especially because the way they kind of reference that prior to the rebirth they had uh, they had an electricity i think or they had something like that you know more stuff than they had now and it was almost like 
they'd had kind of a modern world and then they'd gone back to that old style kind of stone houses and everything and I was just really confused and obviously they have like the containers in the labyrinth which aren't exactly old style and I, I honestly was just really kind of thrown by what I was meant to be imagining like they're all wandering around in tunics and the ladies all have these corset dresses and stuff on um, but people are living in containers and they have blood drives or oh, they're not blood drives they're energy drives but and so I was just a bit confused about what exactly I was meant to be imagining sometimes. I will say I did really love the scene with Famine where he's turning um, like the, the corridor and it's all decaying around him and everything in uh, the castle. I thought that was really clever, like I could really imagine that. That was really cool um, and uh, that was really visual, like I could really imagine that being on like a film. I don't think this book in general would be that great as a film, but that, that bit I could really imagine. Ah, it was just a small bit. That was really well kind of described and written. I want more of that. That kind of writing and description was great, but I just want more of it. So hopefully come the sequel, that will be more. But I did enjoy the book. <laughs> I did enjoy the book. I know I sound like I hated it. I did enjoy it. And I will read the sequel. They were just problems and I feel like it could have been even better if those problems had been dealt with. So anyway, that's it for my review. Um, I will probably do more spoiler filled reviews in the future just because I feel like I can talk about them more and I do feel like sometimes I want to kind of go on about something in a book and I can't because it's got spoilers in. Um, and I'm just never really been a fan of like splitting reviews. I know some people do like half spoilery and half spoiler free or the other way around. But I just, I don't know, I think I would just be worried about people not realising it was going to have spoilers in and spoiling them and I just don't want to do that to people so um, they will either be spoiler filled or they won't be but I will probably be doing more spoiler filled reviews in the future. If you've read this book let me know below what you thought of it, whether you agreed with me, I know I had some fairly um, strong opinions today and yesterday, I went into a bit of a rant about YA in general yesterday but um, let me know what you thought and I will see you again on Monday with another video but until then bye